Come on, guys. Let's now solve question number one C from our Jan two thousand twenty five examination paper. This question is from the topic of accounting standard fifteen, which deals with employee benefits. You have to have a good blend. It is little bit theory, little bit practical. Time of face when you look at the question, you feel like a very easy question. Similar question is there in material, but let me clarify. There is no such question in material on this. Any material me there is no this no this kind of conceptually. If you are aware, doable one. It is only very small trick. It's about common. And I understand it would have not been easy processing that in the exam, but if you calmly sit and then see the question, it's quite easy. There are four numbers. The answer should be very simple to process. Let's start. What is the difference between defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan? This is very clearly covered in our chart as well as our classroom discussion. A lot of problems answers are actually based upon the accounting standard fifteen. Here, literally, we discuss that defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan difference as the one of the first frame. Let me tell what is defined contribution plan and defined. At the age of thirty, an employee joins your organization as an employee. He is going to work with you for next thirty years. At the age of sixty, when this employee retires, we have to give him some retirement benefit, gratuity, health insurance benefit, or some benefit. What you as an organization should do is you should ensure that he gets so much money. Let's say you have promised him fifty lakh rupees. Fifty lakh rupees will not be booked as an expense in thirty years later, two thousand fifty-five. Thirty years now is two thousand fifty-five. In two thousand fifty-five, I will not book fifty lakhs as expense. From now, I should keep little money aside every year so that it will become sixty lakhs at the end of two thousand fifty. When I am doing this, let's say I am a very small entity. I have ten employees. I don't know what to do. What will I do? I will go to LIC. I'll go to PF Institute. I'll go to mutual fund agency. I'll ask them, sir, sir, sir. I have ten employees. To all ten employees, after thirty years, I want to give sixty lakh rupees. I want your help. Then that fund management house, PF or LIC, will tell, okay, pay me fifteen thousand rupees every month. Pay me fifteen thousand rupees every month. Leave it to me. I will take it as a responsibility. Thirty years later, I will give you sixty to your employee. I'll give sixty lakhs to your employee. You don't pay. Your responsibility only giving me fifteen thousand every month. Here, organization's responsibility is limited to giving fifteen thousand every year to that PF institute or LIC, LIC institute. The moment I give fifteen thousand to that, no, my hands are clean. Asked my responsibility is over. Defined contribution plan. My plan is to contribute a defined amount. Once I say contribute the defined amount, my hands are free. Paying the employee fifty lakh or sixty lakh rupees at the end of thirty years is LIC's responsibility, not my responsibility. This is defined contribution plan. However, I don't have ten employees. I have ten thousand employees. I am a very big entity. For every employee, fifteen thousand. Ten thousand into fifteen per month for twelve months. If I pay to them, no, they will invest in my competitor only. They will buy shares of my competitor. So he is doing better than me using my own money of my employees. Oh my God, this is not fair. And when I am such big entity, I don't need help of LIC. I don't need help of PF Institute. Now what will I do? I will hire one fund manager. I will give all the money to him. I will say, I don't know what will you do. Where will you invest? Invest in gold. Invest in copper. Invest in silver. Invest in shares of some company. Invest in gold bonds. Fix a deposit. I don't care. Make that money become fifty lakhs per employee in fifteen years or twenty years. I'll give him a responsibility. Here, my responsibility is not limited to keeping fifteen thousand aside. My responsibility is extending to the date on which I am supposed to pay sixty lakhs to my employee. Here, my liability is contributing sixty lakhs to my employee after thirty years. This is defined benefit plan. Here, my liability is to give the benefit of fifty lakhs to my employee when he retires. Simple difference between defined benefit and defined contribution plan. Well, look, just have to write this defined contribution plan. Post employment benefit under which an enterprise pays fixed contribution to a separate fund will have no further obligation. The entity once you pay that fixed contribution to an entity or to an organization, liability is not there, closed. However, what is defined benefit plan? Post employment benefit plans other than defined contribution. This is the definition as per is. Whatever is not defined contribution plan is defined benefit. In defined benefit plan, I have liability till the date of retirement. As an employee, under defined contribution plan, my liability is only to the extent of deduction and payment of money to the fund house. 
moment i pay they will take care of paying money to the sorry your employees understood this this is the first one next one they are asking under defined benefit plan meaning i have taken the responsibility to pay a specific amount to my employee they are telling how much money can i withdraw how much money can i withdraw that is the question read this from the following information calculate from the following information calculate the amount of defined benefit liability or asset okay let's do it present value of dbu after 30 years i am supposed to pay some money no to my employee that is supposed to be paid after 20 years or after 30 years or after 15 years that is a liability after 15 years today's value whatever is there that much money i should keep aside that money whatever i found it no after 15 years if i have 50 lakhs obligation present value of that 50 lakhs after 15 years today is 36 lakh how did i find present value i would have taken an internal rate of return irr at that rate i go on earning interest 50 lakh after 15 years is 36 lakh today on that 36 lakh if you apply 15% interest for 14 years or 10 years that next 15 years it will become 50 lakhs that is present value of dbu i would have to invest 36 lakh they are telling 36 lakh is present value of defined benefit of and fair value of plan asset so much money i have kept in my assets maybe some securities some risky some non risky small cap mid cap fixed deposit gold bees nifty ef etf everything together is 38.5 38.5 is the asset that i have made its fair value today if i sell all the assets value is 38 lakh and today's liability value liability value of what i am supposed to pay in the future present value of that liability is 36 lakh and further they have told past service cost not yet recognized 7.5 past service cost means employee has given me services i have to give him benefit benefit is supposed to be booked today as an expense but it will be paid on return that 60 lakhs what you pay your employee after 30 years of service that is for 30 years of service you book it as expense every year of service you pay it after service understood so in the past service is given by employee but we did not write expense how much 7.5 and amortized past service cost 7 lakh 50 can i say asset including this is 46 lakh basically 38 lakh 50 i already created asset 7 lakh 50 employee has given me service i would have to give him money of 7 lakh 50 not now later so i have to make further assets of 7 lakh 50 so my asset should have been 46 asset should have been very good then they are telling present value of available future refund is 6 see my liability is how much 36 lakh present value of future obligation is how much 36 how much is the asset 46 i can actually withdraw how much 46 minus 36 i can withdraw up to 10 lakhs i can withdraw up to but in the question they have told present value of the future available refund is 6 so they are telling maximum i can withdraw 6 so i'll take whichever is less and i'll say i'm restricted to withdraw only 6 lakh withdraw to pay the employee today if the employee quits the organization and leaves i can withdraw only 6 lakh that's what they have given in the question answer is actually ending at 6 lakh tested on a conceptual understanding of the student looks very simple but you should know that you should take past service cost to be added to the plan asset already there compare that with the present value of dbo that is there 10 lakh will be the amount available for withdrawal however they have told present value of amount withdrawal withdrawable is only 6 lakh so it is restricted to 6 that set is what you should looks very easy and the day i am solving this the suggested answers of the institute is not yet out the answer according to me let's have a wait and see what is